March's White Dwarf is here. Spiky bits. What's up, hobby maniacs? Rob Bear back again with you today, checking out the new White Dwarf. This thing is crazy. There's all sorts of stuff in here. We got Age of Sigmar, we got Horus Heresy, and of course, some 40k Tau. All up in this magazine. $9 US, probably in the mail to you right now. Just got ours in. And I'm sure you will see it at local game stores uh, this weekend if you don't have a sub to them. As far as contents go, it's, like I said, chock full, all sorts of different things. I like the new feature here where they go and they start taking a closer look at some of the Warhammer World diorama tables. We just saw them post up on Warhammer World's uh, site that they'll be doing a diorama book. It will be available at Warhammer World. So if you go there and you check out all the displays, you can pick up the book and be like, hey, I remember that one. Hey, I remember that one. And it, uh, you know, I think it'll give you a lot better look, you know, but kind of behind the glass, like those angles that you can't see in, you know, designer commentary and talking about, you know, all the effort and everything that went into it. So I think that's a pretty neat feature. There's another huge army feature in here uh, showing off the Iron Warriors with uh, some ad mech attached to them as well for Horus Heresy. A lot of features that we're probably not going to get to, but one of the big ones that everybody always asks for is the Blanchitsu. So we will show you that. It's actually John Blanche in there with some new models and he's been working on. So definitely got to hit that one. The big features in here, of course, is the new Daughters of Cain along with uh, the Tau preview. Now there isn't a whole lot of releases for the Tau, but that doesn't mean that they won't be super popular when they came out and, or when they come out and have some sort of, you know, overall effect on the game itself, as well as the developing meta. <laughs> Cause apparently they get to the other side of the galaxy somehow, which, you know, with <laughs> the technology they had, theoretically that wouldn't be possible right now. <laughs> so I assume they have struck a dark bargain of sorts with some entity of technology and or the dark dark warp who knows i don't know we don't have the codex we don't know yet one of the other things i wanted to talk about was oh gene stealer cults got rules in here that you can use i think the alkali box that uh will let you play necromunda so let's jump right into it here it is first feature on the greater good just kind of talking about them and some of the you know highs and lows of tau in general like hey what they're good at hey what they're not good at close combat shocker i know right <laughs> the releases for the daughters of cain which we already probably know because these are already out right now <laughs> you've got the battle tomb for 40 and the war scroll cards the dice as well i like how they're doing these dice now the flat packs for 20 dollars. they had the square edge offerings there um with the blood angels and dark angels but we haven't seen them again since unfortunately those were 30 dollars us then you've got the two new units, the Malusai and the Canary, which of course also form two different units themselves. Some of these we have been looking forward to just to seeing exactly how big they are and such. We've got Morathi in the studio getting her put together. So there will be a great unboxing and reveal of her here shortly. But we wanted to get to this, uh, this white door first since it's got so much good content in it there's the tile release a lineup where you're going to get the data cards collector's edition book which will probably be yeah it's going to be from gdub only and their codex for 40 dollars as well switching over to the new age of sigmar terrain and the battlefield in the box now previously we were curious and if you saw our review uh, like this doesn't equal six a six by four table apparently this is why five foot six inches by three feet eight inches because it fits over a dining room table and i don't know what the standard dining room table size is but i'm assuming that's it or some configuration thereof uh, that allows folks to just slap this on their dining room table and boom you got a game table at home how cool is that right i feel like that is pretty neat and then you can get this that also comes with the azurite ruins or you can buy the azurite ruins separately for 30 dollars. now we saw the same thing happen with the push fit terrain for 40k but I think it came out a couple weeks later, uh, or late 2017. And then the latest from Forge World, of course, Rogel Dorn. We've got Custodes, we've got Space Wolves, we've got all sorts of stuff on deck 
for them. So it's a very exciting time there. Licensed games, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time here because insert your com witty comment about Warhammer video games here. Uh, I'm sure we've heard them all at this point. Lots of new books and content coming out from 40k to the Heresy to over to the Age of Sigmar themselves. And they're starting to port over some of the characters from the world that was the the old world so to speak into the mortal realms here's a look at what you can buy to field with your daughters of cain of course you've got the new kits and the previous kits themselves which all go into that and, and uh, you know the big news that we've been hearing is the stuff about uh sea elves basically coming out and all sorts of rumors there so that is Big on people's minds as they start to reform the elf race. A E L F, of course, not elf in the, the traditional sense, because, well, let's face it, these aren't the elves we're used to. Now, here's a lot of the illumination section with some of the art. It looks like they've gone back and touched it up in full color. Some of the stuff we've seen, you know, in the original codex in 2003, or excuse me, 2001, and some of the newer stuff that is more recent. It is always cool to see. That was the, I believe that was the Codex cover back in 2001, September 2001. A very unfortunate month for the world. I suppose that's one of the reasons I remember when the Tau came out. But nonetheless, they have grown to have a special place in most fans' hearts out there. And of course, they have a battle report on uh, the new... I think they're going up against Death. The new Daughters of Cain going up against Death right there. Let's see what other features we want to show you in here. Oh, there's that big Iron Warriors army, of course, paired with Mechanicum, which you can do as allies in Horus Heresy. And then there was the Diorama feature, which I thought was just great. I mean, just look at all the stunning. I had no idea that there was like a sewer section in here, you know, with some water treatment facilities. And, you know, most of the time you see these pictures, you just see the landing pad. And that's really cool to see. So I can only imagine how awesome that diorama book is going to be if you're able to scoop one up starting on March 3rd in Warhammer World itself. Look at those missiles right there. Awesome effects. Get down to ground level and see these kind of pictures. This is the stuff you can't see through the cases. That's why it's so cool. And, you know, living it in here is almost, almost, <laughs> but not quite as good as being there, right? Blanchitsu, John Blanche coming in hot with some of his own creations here. I was reading through the article earlier and he was like, you know, one of the things uh, it, that I'm sure will strike home with a lot of uh, conversionists out there is, you know, John mentions, hey, I spend more time putting them in street, converting and putting them in street together than I do painting. Remember, John, John's an artist. He's an illustrator. He's been behind the scenes, you know, coming up with theme and, and storyboards and stuff for 30 years, you know, with Warhammer. So it's really cool to see where... He's more of the cre on the creative side than, hey, let me just throw some paint on this, which, you know, he has his own style as well. But in no way does this look like, hey, I just threw paint on it. But that's kind of his feel. He takes more passion in, in building and converting the models, which I feel like, you know, a lot of folks out there too. There's a game in here for playing with your Caradon Overlords. And then the rules, you've probably already seen these. These have made it out earlier in the week on the web. You've got the Gene Stero called Gang rules in here um i'm sure you could probably freeze frame it and check all these out if you really wanted to however there's much better pictures online you could probably just do a google search you know for them to check them all out paint splatter wise uh, it's a twofer we've got morathi herself with uh, a lot of the techniques and stuff that are more of that darker organic kind of feel which is cool to see and it goes pretty much covers the whole uh smaller model not the Shadow Queen, and then the Tau Fire Warriors, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to be picking those up, and the Battle Suits of the Valora Sept. And they even go over stifling and how to apply that, you know, that battle damage. You can always stop right here if you want, but you can go that extra mile and do a little bit of battle damage on your suits just to make them look, um, you know, take them to that next level. There's nothing wrong with, you know, stopping halfway through to some of these points just to get your stuff to tabletop, and then coming back and doing... Uh, the detail work and all those things right there because let's face it painted models play better and I would rather have mostly painted models on the tabletop <laughs> than fully painted models on the tabletop if you knew if you get my drift there another great ad for the towel showing all the kits available currently and the new stuff the data cards the start collecting is a great place to start obviously and the book themselves and then all the big baddies 
and all the individual team or the individual units that are currently available. Now, there was that great Battle Force deal at Christmas time, but man, that thing is gone. It's like not even on GW site anymore. That would have been such a sweet deal for 170 bucks. But it looks like unless you can find it at your local game store, you're going to be picking these up uh, individually if you want to start playing the tap. The early rumors are that the commanders are only one per detachment, which is pretty good because, um, you know, money wise, because I think they're about 130 bucks. We actually hadn't seen that coalition command box yet. I wonder what that's going to be about. Hmm. It looks like that might be the new rollout. So it was already, I want to say, that, no, that was 75 and the crisis suits, which also aren't on here. That's curious. So the crisis suit box was 75 and then you've got the coalition command that looks to come with that new uh, ethereal model. Hmm, which may not be sold separately. Interesting. Well, I guess we'll find out the complete rebox release here shortly, uh, about this time next week, I'm sure. Some more highlights and spotlights and different things on some different artists. The Tale of Four Warlords is back. Uh, forget what else is in here that's worth remarking about. Here's the teaser from the back of the book. Malign Importance, Battleground, Ancient Evils, Heavy Metal, 40k battle report necromunda rules some more necromunda rules maybe the maybe they're coming out with another uh, box another data sheet insert so that you can play with gangs even more gangs till they get their gangs out i feel like they don't need to put out a gene stealer gang when they've already come out with all those great miniatures that you can definitely use so maybe there's some other ones out there that we could see i'd definitely like to see the judge dread arbitize <laughs> come out at some point for sure that might that might get my uh, hobby juices going to start playing Necromunda for sure. So that looks to be about the high notes for this one. If you're playing Tau or if you're playing Daughters of Sigmar. Or <laughs> Daughters of Sigmar. The worst. I think that was actually a Mordheim gang. Oh my gosh. Uh, I can't keep it all straight anymore. Cracking up. The uh, Daughters of Cain. <laughs> Models. Well, then the paint splatters for you. If you don't, then eh, this might not be the best hobby type issue to pick up for uh, your hobby juices, but there are still some really good features in here nonetheless. So it seems like every month they're coming out with something uh, more and more to put in here to really add value to the magazine itself. And it's great to see because this is such a good starting point for, for you know so many folks out there. And it's uh, it's really cool to see all those features in here to making it really worth picking up a paper publication in this digital arguably digital age so if you liked this feature make sure you check out all of our other white dwarf reviews on the channel here we go way 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 back back to when they were weekly even <laughs> back before that i don't even know but we got a, a lot of white dwarf videos here on this channel make sure you work out your hobby muscles hit that subscribe button and mash down notifications so that you can be the very first to like and comment on all our new videos here on the channel deleted scenes bonus content and all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached that's not all the longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.